Here we go, it's working. Okay, I have not done a live video before where I'm cooking, so this might be super not ideal. But I wanna talk about breakfast, because <laughs> I get asked about breakfast a lot. And so, good morning. Shout out to that. Good morning, and thank you for joining me. Um, breakfast is a big deal for a lot of people because they're so busy. And so, it's one of the, the questions that I get the most is usually about how to do breakfast when you're on the run because um, we have really busy mornings and it's really hard for people because they're on the go and so I'll talk about that I'm going to talk about um, why we need breakfast um, and then how to train your sort of retrain your brain for breakfast because when we get stuck in thinking that when we get used to patterns when we get used to not eating breakfast and we stop eating breakfast and our body gets used to not having it. So when our body's not having it, it stops asking for it. Eventually our body will stop asking for cues for breakfast because we haven't been having it. And so what I'm going to talk about is how to retrain your body to get used to having breakfast again so that it's easy. And then I'm going to cook and I'm making eggs and I'm going to put on my, my potato for hash browns and I've got bread, and so we can talk about bread and whole grains and all of that. So, why do we need breakfast? So obviously people know it's one of the um, most important meals of the day. That's what we're taught, right? I know I'm probably not in this frame anymore, but this is where I need to be because this is where my cutting board is. And so obviously we know that we need food, we need calories, we need energy, we need nourishment, but what we don't understand is that it's not, well, what most people don't understand is that it's not about calories. Um, we know that calories are energy for our body, but how most people see that is that calories are bad. And that's the diet mindset. That's what we are um, stuck in and used to thinking about calories as being bad. And so one of the things that I work on with people is getting them to understand that food is good, food is energy and nourishment for our body and not something to be feared. Because unfortunately, when we have that fear, we start treating food as an enemy or something that stresses us out instead of how we should view food, which is something that supports us to do the things that we need to do for our day and make it as easy as possible with a simple diet of whole foods, which is what I teach. And it's the easiest diet to follow because all you have to think about is food as close to nature as possible. And that's why I'm chopping a potato for my hash browns and not emptying a bag of frozen hash browns with lots of preservatives or driving through somewhere that carries <laughs> hash browns frozen and prepackaged and full of preservatives. So on my stove I've also got my brown rice soaking. Um, soaking and sprouting is a really traditional method of food prep. Uh oh, I dropped a potato. And one of the best things that soaking my rice does is it removes the phytic acid from the grain and makes the minerals in the whole grain more available to us. So all I did was I measured out how much rice I wanted for the next day. I put water to cover and a little bit of acid. So you need uh, a squirt of lemon, some apple cider vinegar, something in it to draw the acid out. And you soak it for overnight. I just do it overnight. That makes it the easiest. And, and then it, uh, one of the greatest things about that is that it actually quickens the cooking time. So one of the things that people would say about brown rice is that, oh, it takes so long to cook. But if you soak it, it saves you a lot of time. Okay, so I've got my hash browns all chopped. So I just put a little bit of 
extra virgin olive oil in my pan. This is so weird because I'm not the best cook and I feel like I'm on the Food Network right now. And I'm spilling potatoes everywhere. So yeah, that's the most important thing I wanted to talk about, about the changing your mindset about breakfast that it's for nourishment. It's not about calories. Um, it's, it is about energy, but it's about energy so that we can get through our morning. A lot of people have, this is their experience. If we are used to skipping breakfast, then what's gonna happen is that by lunchtime we feel starving, right? And that happens a lot. So when you get to the point where you feel starving, what did we do in the hours before that? We obviously didn't eat, or we didn't eat enough, or we didn't have enough fat. So we need to have a meal that's gonna satisfy us to the next meal and give us enough energy to get through there so that we feel good and we don't have to worry about food. Should have preheated my pan, but I did not. Um, so another point about this, I know a lot of people are doing intermittent fasting. And so there is specific times where you will go, specific windows where you will not eat. And I don't teach intermittent fasting. If people come to me and they do intermittent fasting, I can help them. What I would do is um, look at the window that you're not eating and we would talk about it. We talk about see if intermittent fasting is even working for your body. And if it is, then I would just help you upgrade the foods that you are bringing into your diet when you do eat. So that's sort of how I work around. When people come to me and they're on specific diets, it's like I don't teach that, but I can work with where you are at based on where you're at in that program. So, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like say, it's sort of like how I won't take anyone off their meds. It's sort of the same. It's like, it's like I won't take you off that. I won't tell you that you shouldn't be doing that. If it's working for you, it's working for you. That's good. I want things to work for you, and but what I can do is help you within that. So if you're doing that, um, I can still help you upgrade and make tweaks in your diet around the fasting. Um, just That's just a point, because I know a lot of people don't eat breakfast because of IF. Um, I'm a big breakfast proponent. Rock stars eat breakfast. I have a Pinterest page called that. Um, I think breakfast is awesome. To me, breakfast was really difficult when I was very young, when I was in high school and, and after, I did have my body trained to not eat breakfast. And again, that was the diet mindset because I was used to uh, not, I was used to thinking the less that I eat, the better, because the less that I eat, that's less calories coming in and then I'll lose weight. After, during and after nutrition school, I learned how very wrong that, that mindset was. And so now if I miss breakfast, I feel very strange later in the day. I'm, I have blood sugar issues, so I'll get cranky and irritable or I might get shaky. Um, I might feel like a little bit, you know, not right in my head, um, just off. And so I know that I need breakfast and it doesn't have to be a big, elaborate, fancy breakfast at all. It doesn't have to be something that takes me a long time to cook. I'm just doing this this morning because I'm on video with you all and it's also Sunday. So, you know, when you have a day off is when you do get to treat yourself and have fancier, nicer breakfasts um, and meals. Oh, and speaking of meal planning, I have everything here ready for me to make a bunch of apple crisps because it's apple season. Yes. And so what I'm gonna do is make maybe two or three apple crisps today and so those are because I use really high quality ingredients in my baking those are and they're not loaded with sugar those are foods that I can actually eat for breakfast throughout the week so I'm, I'm doing meal prep today where I'm getting uh, just my breakfast I'm thinking about um, I'm getting my apple crisps ready to go so that I can have breakfast ready for the week um, Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put some, I'm going to, once my hash browns are cooked, I'm going to put, I'm going to put my beautiful free-range eggs in them and
some greens. My friends at Stewberry Farm in Summerland offered me some arugula, but I wasn't able to get there early enough to get it before my video. But otherwise, I would love to have some greens in my breakfast. Um, but what I do have are some chives and some basil and some fresh rosemary. So I'm going to put these in my eggs for something green, um, for some extra nutrients, but also so my eggs look pretty. And they're going to be super tasty now because they have all these delicious herbs in them. And so they're going to have some extra yummy flavor. A lot of people care about that. Um, I'm a pretty simple cook, and so I don't always think about depths and layers of flavor and making things a really specific way. For me, it's more just like, what do I have on hand and what can I throw in and make it as easy and simple as possible? Because that's what I'm all about. Um, so I'm just gonna chop those up now. So how to retrain your body for breakfast. So this is um, one of the biggest not, it's not really an issue, it's just, it's such a, um, it's such a common assumption that that's good to do. And so I do get asked about it a lot, which is, you know, I don't, I just don't feel hungry in the morning and so I don't eat breakfast. So what's happening there is our body works on signals. Our body works on signals through, you know, uh, electricity, through our nerves, through our hormones, but it's also emotionally working on signals. So it's really easy for us, I need more oil, it's really easy for us to ignore signals for a certain amount of time, and if we ignore them long enough, then our, our, we're, we're training our body to say, or to think, you know, I don't actually care that you've asked for this so much. Um, I'm not we're, not, we're not doing that. And so when the body hears that over and over again, it goes, okay, I'm asking for this thing, and I'm not getting it, and I'm not getting it, and I'm not getting it. I look like a really messy cook. I'm normally not, because I'm thinking about, thinking about the camera. And so, so basically we're training our body to not get the things that it's asking for, which is really unfair. Um, but we're so used to doing that, you know, we're so used to um, following what we think is going to be uh, right for our body or an ideal way to lose weight or, or a faster way for us to lose weight. That's what we're used to doing is, is cutting back. We think that that's, that's going to be a healthier way for us to get to our goal weight. So how to retrain that is really, really simple. Basically, if we realize that we've been telling our body to not have something, then all we have to do is give it what it's been asking for, even though it's not asking for it anymore. Right? So, so this is what I get people to do. When they say, I, I don't eat breakfast, I can't eat breakfast, or I don't feel hungry in the morning, I just tell them to start with one bite of food. So if you haven't eaten breakfast, say, in years, you're not going to want to sit down and have potatoes and eggs and greens or a stir fry or like a classic breakfast with eggs and bacon or even something healthy and easy like a yogurt and granola, you're not going to want to have that. You're not going to want to have anything because your body's not used to it. So I just tell them to have one bite. So take a banana, cut it in half, cut it in quarter, and eat one of the quarters. The next day, same thing. You can add some fat if you want, a little bit of peanut butter or almond butter. Um, you can maybe have half an avocado. So what we're doing then is we're, we're sort of starting to retrain the body um, and, you know, saying to it, I recognize that you've been asking for this thing, and I'm sorry that I haven't given it to you, and I'm giving it to you now, but in really small amounts, because we don't want to overwhelm our body, and we don't want to piss it off by giving it 
huge breakfast and assuming that it's just going to easily digest that, because that's not going to feel good, um, especially especially if we haven't had breakfast in a really long time. And a lot of people just have coffee for breakfast. I know that's a thing. Um, and that's usually like the office culture thing, or you know, that's like an on-the-go thing too, right? It's like, well, I'm just too busy, and I don't, I don't have time for breakfast, so I just have coffee. Coffee is not a meal, and coffee doesn't give our body any nourishment. So, one bite to start retraining our stomach. Breakfast is coming, food is coming. Can you handle this in just a little bit? Um, after a week, and you sort of, you sort of have to ballpark this and just see how it feels for you. Base and this, is, I mean, I, when the when I'm working with clients with this, it's like it's just that. So we we get to tailor it for them. But so to speak to it just in a general sense is you have to be able to judge when can I start having a little bit more. And your best cue for when to start adding more is when you have your one bite or your two bites and you're still hungry. So what happens then is that because you've had those one, those one bites for a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month, everyone's different. It might only take a couple days. Everyone's different. And then your body will say, oh, that's happening. We're getting breakfast again. This is fantastic. So it'll start asking for it. Then you'll start getting that hunger cue again, and you'll be able to increase how much you're eating for breakfast. Um, the other thing that I see a lot that I know is problematic for people because they're busy as hell, especially um, people with family and kids, is eating breakfast on the go. So the reason that this is a problem is simply because we're not prepared for it. So what happens if we don't prepare either something the day before or the night before, or prepare on the, on, the, on the weekend, prepare for the whole week of breakfasts. What happens is that we, because there's nothing ready, we're either going to make a, a bad choice, we're either going to grab something really quick that's unhealthy, um, or just going to drive through somewhere. So we're going we're gonna to go to Tim Hortons, um, and we're going to get you know some, something really processed or something really sugary. Now, what happens when we do that, if we start our day with sugar, uh, refined white sugar, is we're going to be playing a really dangerous game with our blood sugar balance. And one of the biggest reasons that people gain weight is because we're spiking and crashing our blood sugar all day. It's really hard on our liver. And blood sugar balance and liver are one of the two biggest keys that I help people with when they come to me for help for losing weight. And so what we want to do is remove that refined sugar or we want to replace it. So, for instance, instead of having a croissant or a um, muffin, you know, I'm thinking about drive throughs something fast that you would get that's really loaded up with sugar. Instead of having something like that, it's like, okay, let's have some fruit, right? Um, you're still getting that energy. You're still getting that pep from the glucose, but you're not going to be spiking your blood sugar the way that, that something that refined and processed is going to do for you. And the difference between that and fruit, something like fruit, is that you still get that sweetness. You still get that sweet kick, but you don't get the spike in your blood sugar. And you're getting fiber, minerals, vitamins, enzymes. You're getting this perfect package of healthy nutrition in an apple, for instance. So when you can say, oh, I thought, with, I thought fruit was bad for me because it's, it's got sugar in it. This comes from a tree. It's not bad for you. It's a perfect package from nature, full of good things. Definitely not the same as a muffin from the grocery store or from the drive through or what, what have you. Um, totally different. And once we think about it, it, it makes sense. It's just we're not used to thinking of food that way, right? We're used to just thinking of numbers and calories. So it's hard for us to sort of change our, our mindset on that. But again, that's where the whole foods comes in because it's like if we just remember a whole foods diet close to nature as possible, then it's really easy because anything that 
is coming from a tree can't be bad. Anything from a bush, anything from the ground. Okay, I've chopped up my basil. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I wish that there was smell-o-vision. Maybe one day we'll have that. Oh, that'd be cool. If the Food Network had smell-o-vision. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just chopping up my chives. So yeah, it's really, it's really fast and it's not complicated at all to start eating breakfast again. And I guarantee once you get your body used to it, you're going to realize that you feel different. And so how you'll see that is maybe you won't be starving by lunchtime. Um, the, the, the best and biggest benefit that people notice from their uh, adding in breakfast, I'm just gonna do my rosemary now. Not too much of it because it's super strong. Um, one of the best benefits that people will notice from adding in breakfast if they haven't had it in a while is that 3 p.m. crash. So the 3 p.m. crash, so I was talking about this with a client the other day. Um, she was saying, she works in an office, and so she was saying, you know, it's really hard at about 3 p.m. I get really tired and, and you know, I really want something sweet. And so we talked about breakfast and how, you know, that could simply be a symptom of her not eating enough breakfast or not eating a breakfast with enough fat in it. So that 3 p.m. crash is so common, I said to her, you know, on your, um, take your lunch break at 3 p.m. And, and drive to, just drive by the Tim Hortons drive through and you'll see the lineup is huge. 3 p.m. crash is super common. And one of the fastest ways to avoid the 3 p.m. crash having a good enough breakfast. So again, that's the blood sugar balance and that's giving ourselves some nourishment, some healthy nutrition, some healthy fats to keep our blood sugar stable throughout the day. If we start our day with a croissant or a muffin and we spike our blood sugar, then we're gonna crash. And then our body's gonna ask for the spike again, right? So then, so we eat our lunch, we spike, probably because we're having, probably we're having something in the office sugary or something not the best for us, just assuming the worst here, by 3 p.m., our blood sugar is crazy. And so that's one of the coolest things that people will notice is that they don't have that 3 p.m. crash anymore. And it's so helpful for people that work in an office because you have two more hours of work that you need to get through. And so you don't want to be tired and lethargic and feeling crappy at 3 p.m. You want to have enough energy for the work for two more hours and have a good afternoon and, and not be cranky. <laughs> and that's, how, that's one of the easiest uh, you know, ways that we'll see our blood sugar coming into play is when suddenly we're just irritable for no reason. It's like, hmm, did I eat enough? Did I eat enough fat? So when I talk about fat, and I have a blog, um, I have an article on my site called The Easy Guide to, the Easy Guide to Fats. <clears throat> so I talk about the good fat, olive oil, coconut oil, butter, um, lard and tallow, which people don't use, but they are healthy traditional animal fats. Um, I have a blog on there. Fats to eat, fats to not eat. So it's really, really simple, and you can go look in there and um, see for yourself. Okay, so my hash browns are super crispy and beautiful. And I'm going to breakfast. That is my go-to. I'm going to put all my herbs in now. 
Um, leftovers are a great breakfast because they're already ready to go. They're sitting in the fridge. All you have to do is reheat them. Um, it, it may feel weird at first to have a stir fry, you know, or a casserole or something. It may feel really weird to have that at breakfast time, but you know what? There's no rules. There is no rules. You're allowed to have stir fry at breakfast. You're allowed to have rice or fish or whatever veggies at breakfast. And that's another thing that, that people get, you know, sort of weirded out about is thinking, well, you know, I don't have time to make uh, breakfast, um, like breakfast foods. Breakfast foods was just an idea that was sold to us that breakfast needed to look this way. It doesn't have to look any specific way. I, again, as I said, doing this because it's Sunday and I have more time. Sunday's my try to take the day off. Of course, it's fall, so I'm busy. And change makers is launching. So don't have as much uh, leeway, but normally I would. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to bring you to me. Oh, good morning. How do I flip this? Here we go. Shelly, Madison, and Pamela. Hey, cool. Thanks, ladies. So for me, um, yeah, leftovers are, leftovers are like number one. They're fast. They're ready. They're easy. Um, I mentioned earlier people um, asking for breakfast ideas to go. Again, it's just about prep. So as long as you have thought about breakfast the night before, that makes it easiest. Um, yogurt, granola, berries, a lot of people have smoothies for breakfast. Smoothies for breakfast is fantastic. You have to chew your smoothie. <laughs> um, a lot of people will think that smoothies are the, the healthiest, most ideal breakfast, but if we're just chugging it and we're not relaxed and enjoying it, we're still not going to digest it properly and then we're not going to get all the good nutrition from it. So um, that is really important and again that's just a mindful eating piece too, right? A mindful eating is key um, and even with something like smoothies where you just think, oh well, I'll just chug it, I'll just drink it back, um, we're still not giving our body any warning that food is coming. When we chew we're telling our body food is coming, please prepare. And so what happens when we do that is that our body can then prepare proper enzymes to come to break down the smoothie so that we can get proper nutrients from it. And so it's, it, it's, it's a weird adjustment to think about that and have to chew something liquid, but you want to be supporting your digestive system to work as well as possible. And the fastest way to do that is just to chew more. Helps break down the food better because our stomach doesn't have teeth. I say that all the time. Oh man, it smells so good. Um, so that's my that's my scramble. Um, hash browns with eggies in it. And, um, you know, I should probably show you. So that's my scramble. Um, it looks super, super good. And what I would have for... What I would have for breakfast if I was on the road is probably just a piece of fruit with some fat. So if I can't have like an almond butter or a peanut butter with it, then I would have um, maybe half an avocado. Um, I know a lot of people do the Bulletproof coffee, which is really cool and delicious. It's coffee with coconut oil or butter added to it and then some honey. And that's really fantastic because, you know, one of the problems with coffee is just what we're adding to it. It's not necessarily that the coffee's bad. It's what we're adding to it. And so if we have coffee with a bunch of white sugar and a bunch of dairy, not really ideal, especially for first thing in the morning, your body's like, whoa, what's happening here? It's not really ideal, but if we're, if we're going to be adding high quality ingredients to our coffee, um, coconut oil with um, some raw honey, we're adding more nutrients. Um, the honey is full of minerals. We're adding lots of minerals to it. And so because there's, because there's also fat added, the coconut oil, um, the, the white sugar in the coffee, it's not there. We've replaced it with honey. So it's not going to spike our blood sugar as much. It's going to actually feel more like a meal and help satisfy us until lunchtime. So that's a really cool um, quick fix. It's just sort of making these little tweaks and these little upgrades to make things feel better so they work for you. Um, so yogurt and granola, 
uh, is one of my sort of go-to breakfasts other than fruit. And of course, I'm just coming off of summer when, when you just eat so much fruit. Um, so this is really good timing to be talking about this. It's like, what are we eating now in transition as we get into fall and, and everything's changing. So now there's more squashes and pumpkins and there's more root veggies. Um, I do have a, an article, my blog, a recipe on my blog for sweet potato oats. So oats are a fantastic breakfast. And again, you can sweeten them. Um, like I was a little bit traumatized from just eating, you know, super boring oatmeal with like no, no flavor, no nothing added to it. When I was really little, I, I don't think those fancy Quaker oats were were a thing. When I was very young, I don't I don't think they had those. Um, and now, of course, people are like, those are great because they taste so good. But again, it's it's about reading labels, right? Um, they're they're not a healthy way to start the day because they're loaded with so much sugar. Um, but what you can do is just customize your oats for you. So um, you can cook your oatmeal up, and then you can add some really beautiful ingredients to it like fruit, like honey, <clears throat> local honey. I've got really stunning uh, lavender honey, like any like any honey you want. And there's all sorts of different beautiful uh, flavored ones now. Again, if they're lo hopefully local, um, that's going to add nutrition to your oats, but also make it really tasty, which makes it easier to eat. Um, on the go, you can do oats. Um, overnight oats. Just look up recipes for overnight oats. I get a lot of people to start um, with overnight oats when they're not used to having breakfast on the go, if they're just used to skipping it. Overnight oats because you basically make them in a jar, you put them in the fridge, you do nothing, like you sleep, and then when you wake up, your breakfast is ready. So overnight oats are fantastic because all you have to do is put them in the jar with the other ingredients and they cook for you in the fridge overnight. So then in the morning, when you grab your, you grab your jar and you're in a hurry, but you have already prepped your breakfast, then your overnight oats are ready and they're soft and the fruit has sort of melted into them. Aw, thanks, Pam. And the, oh, Pam has honey. And the fruit sort of, um, it, it, it'll melt a little bit into it and it'll give your uh, overnight oats more flavor and more sweetness so they're really easy to eat um, obviously you can't really eat them while you're driving but most people don't most what I've seen most people do is that they when they're on the go is that they just want to get something and then they'll eat when they get to the office so overnight oats are great for that because they're in a jar you can eat them at the office at your desk um, Anything, you know, anything fast like that, fruit you can grab with almond butter, a um, handful of nuts and seeds, um, that's super quick. I think fruit is my go-to, but again, you know, like it's like in December, I don't want to be eating um, a bunch of fruit in the morning. It just, it's not natural. So um, that's why I will gravitate towards oats in the fall and winter, um, as well as sweet potatoes. And sweet potatoes for breakfast, I know it sounds weird, but... Um, frying up some sweet potatoes with some um, um, maple syrup on them, some cinnamon, uh, so good, so tasty and so easy. Um, I'm going to post below this, I'm going to post my blog about breakfast because rock stars eat breakfast, I have that in there, I have my Pinterest page that's going to give you a bunch of um, breakfast ideas because as again I said, I I'm not a chef, like I'm not, um, I'm a semi-decent cook but I'm a throw together fly by the seat of your pants cook and so when people are like I need recipes for this or that Google is your friend so I'm going to post that link because that link's gonna talk more about breakfast and give you some more ideas and hopefully get you what you need um, I really appreciate anyone that is watching me right now and thank you for joining me so early on this rainy Sunday morning, I'm just looking at my list to make sure I talked about everything I wanted to, what I normally eat for breakfast. Yeah, I talked about leftovers, eating on the go. Yeah, and mindful eating. So again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're eating as long as you're eating it mindfully. And of course it does matter what you're eating, but I'm saying as you're changing your diet and, and upgrading and making tweaks, the best thing you can do is incorporate mindful eating to improve your digestion. And so we have these, we have two different nervous systems, parasympathetic and sympathetic. <clears throat> Can't be in both at the same time, we can only be in one. When we're slightly stressed or if we deal with chronic stress, 
our digestive system is not going to function optimally or at all because we are stressed and so when our body sends out those stress hormones it shuts down the digestive process because if we're being chased by a tiger we don't need to digest food we need to run so our body goes nope that's not important and so that's why so many people struggle with digestion because we're so stressed today um, there's a lot of you know crap that people deal with that causes them chronic stress and so it affects their digestive system and so one of the quickest ways to improve that is just to chew your food better and practice mindful eating which is a big 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 part of my practice um, teaching people intuitive eating because when we master mindful eating we master learning our body's cues and signals and then we learn what foods work for us and then we never have to diet again because our body will tell us what it wants and what it doesn't want and we don't have to use willpower we're just listening to our body it's fantastic and it's so so freeing I'm gonna go enjoy my my <coughs> egg hash now and hopefully this was helpful this was a super quick training I understand that um, but I haven't I haven't done one in a while in my uh, in my Facebook group so thank you for joining hopefully this has helped if you have any questions post them below my video and I will get to it and I will post a blog for you to read more and I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and thank you so much for watching Mwah.